Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle right here. This is the Henry Case Color Hardened 4570 rifle. So 4570 is the caliber that it's in. It's a pretty powerful caliber and actually I had never fired one until I got this rifle in. I've seen other videos of people doing it and I'm a fan of big bore rifles and pistols. They're just fun to shoot, uh, especially the thumper type guns and this one certainly fits in that category so I need to get my hands on it for sure. Uh, the debate came down to which model Henry to get it in and the case core hardened receiver is just beautiful. I'll probably mention that like five times in the review. Uh, so it really drew me to it. But what we're going to do next is uh, let the dogs take a look at it, of course, see if they approve of it. And then we're going to step out and uh, see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle. We've got a few rounds to put through it. And uh, then we'll come back in, get into the details and let you know what we think of it overall. Time to test the accuracy of this beast. We have in the rifle right now, we have the uh, 300 grain trophy bonded bear claws here from Federal. And uh, target sound range 100 yards. It's pretty windy out today. At least it's kind of calm right now, but it's been windy. Um, on there, we have a one by four power scope. This is the uh, Hilux CMR. For those uh, who don't know, the 4570 is drilled in tap for a Weaver 63B mount. So uh, there's tons of those out there. I think they're like 15 bucks on Amazon. That's where I picked it up. Uh, put that on there and then put these uh, medium worn rings on there, W-A-R-N-E. Um, so it's a pretty solid little setup. Of course, the uh, buckhorn sights work fine. Uh, but if we're talking about precision, a magnified optic really, really helps. So uh, we're going to send a few rounds down range to see how it does. Uh, honestly, I know nothing about the inherent like ballistic uh, uh, capabilities if you will in terms of accuracy for the 4570 so i'm gonna find out just along with you guys do so uh let's see what we can do uh last thing i didn't mention ctk precision rest so let's do it That firing probably woke up whoever was just driving by. <laughs> uh, anyway. Tell you what, church must have just got out with all that traffic. We never have that here. So, all right, so that was the first group. Now we're gonna put the uh, Fusion in there. This is 4570 Fusion again, 300 grain bullet, but obviously a much different load in terms of the way the bullet looks and uh, maybe we'll perform. So we'll see that here in just a second. But this one has the brass cases as opposed to sort of the shiny nickel cases here for the uh, one we we're just shooting. So, if you, those of you that don't know how to load this, uh, you're gonna have this little rod that comes up, you just twist it and pull up, and then you can insert your rounds here. Uh, the 4570, it's gonna take five plus, or five rounds. Uh, you could put one in the chamber and do six, but then you have to drop the hammer and it could be a safety issue. I'll leave that to you guys to decide. Um, but there you go, and then at that point, you just uh, bring the little magazine down that golden part and uh turn to twist it into place and that's it that is the loading process pretty simple stuff all right let's see how this load does Thank you. 
check it out. I'm very surprised, pleasantly so, by the accuracy of that first group that we saw there. Uh, basically, just to let you guys know so you can see point of impact shifts and stuff like that, I was aiming right at the top middle uh, right there of the black circle. So, of course, it was zeroed for the first load that you guys saw. Uh, sorry about the wind, but that was actually in, in place during the review as well, or during the accuracy portion as well. So, center to center. Look at that inch and a quarter. Let me make sure I'm actually measuring the, yep, inch and a quarter on that first group. So very good accuracy. And then on the second group, we're coming in at center to center, two inches and a quarter. So it definitely preferred the first load for sure. And you can actually see the point of impact shift as well. So this one came a little bit further over to the right for whatever reason. Now that's that's just one of the mysteries of uh, rifle shooting. If you do it for long enough, you'll see it a lot. So all in all, very pleased with the accuracy of it. In 45.7, yeah, actually, I kind of expected both groups to look like this. I don't know why. It just doesn't seem like an inherently accurate round to me. But to get inch and a quarter group out of it, uh, again, Federal makes really good ammo. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no getting around that, but pleasantly surprised for sure. Getting into the details of the rifle, we'll start with the barrel. It's an octagonal barrel, has a nice deep blue finish all the way around, and the barrel itself is 22 inches long, and it has a 1 in 20 twist, which is pretty common for 4570 rifles, as you guys saw. Certainly had acceptable accuracy out there, so you can't complain with that. Now, one thing I want to point out is that Henry makes uh, several 4570 rifles, um, and a couple of them, including the All Weather and I believe the Big Boy Steel, have a round barrel, and they save a little bit of weight however for me personally the, one of the reasons I went with the case called hardened uh, was not just the looks that we'll get into a little bit later but the um, actual barrel is heavier by a good bit so having that weight out there definitely helps soak up the recoil of the 4570 uh, making it really not bad to shoot at all so barrel is beautiful and obviously shoots well as you guys just saw you saw the loading process out there at the range but here's a close-up look there's the knurled end cap and uh, you just twist it and pull out to load here through the bottom. Now you guys can see this 4570 magazine tube is gigantic. I have large hands and even that thing looks next looks large next to my hands. So it's definitely big and kind of comical for those of you guys who are used to lever guns. Uh, we'll move back here and you guys can see the handguard retainer has the case color hardened finish as well. So it's uh, beautiful, it has the uh, sling swivel there. It can also be used as a bipod mount and people have laughed at me before in Henry videos when I use the bipod. But if you're out hunting and you need to get stable for a shot uh, it can be very helpful or if you're using shooting sticks it can also be attached there if it has a bipod attachment so it can come in handy in the field for more than just a sling swivel so it fills both roles well the handguard along with the stock is made from american walnut you guys can see it has beautiful checkering in there definitely gives you a good positive grip on it and looks nice as well so it does both jobs well, now the rear sight here is a buckhorn sight, and you combine that with the uh, gold dot front sight, and uh, definitely gives you a very classic shooting picture. Now, uh, for me, um, it tends to not lead to the best accuracy. Again, that's with me shooting it. I've seen some videos online where guys are out there shooting this thing at 300 yards with the buckhorn sights. Uh, for me, I tend to do a little bit better with either a peep sights or a scope, which is why you guys saw a scope out there when we were doing the accuracy portion. That helps me, and the beautiful part about the Henry rifles is that the receivers are drilled and tapped so that way you can put a scope mount on there which you guys saw we had so there's plenty of scope mounts out there for them I think I picked mine up on Amazon for like 20 bucks and it worked just fine so no issues there at all um, many different scopes will fit I, I personally like those low power uh, variable magnification scopes on here they just sit nice and low and with the stock height of the comb it works well and you get a good cheek weld every time. The case color hardened receiver is not only gorgeous, which it certainly is, uh, one thing that's nice about it is that it's very field friendly. So uh, these have been around since I believe the late 1800s in terms of the case color hardened process on steel, and it holds up very well to the elements. Uh, the brass that Henry puts out obviously is beautiful, but definitely requires a lot more maintenance and out in the field the case color hardened finish is gonna hold up a little bit well to some austere conditions. Plus, I think it just looks cool. And the way they do that is just awesome. The fact that every single receiver looks different than the other one, they're all unique, and there's just something cool about it and just the old school technology being applied in, what, 2017 now. So uh, definitely cool all the way around. 
you guys can see it has a gigantic bolt because of the 4570 round and the throw on it like most henry's is very smooth i like the fact that it also has the small latch here i know henry some of the rifles they offer them with the large latch for gloved hand use at least that's what most people say i prefer the small latch for both i just like having a little bit less slop when i'm running the action to me it just feels like a little bit more control on the rifle but it's smooth as you would expect and you can see that really long throw to accommodate the uh, 4570 around and I'll kind of put it back in place slowly so you guys can see something here it does have the transfer bar safety so that way if the uh, lever isn't fully engaged you cannot fire it so even if we get the bolt to go home into battery here like that and the transfer bar safety isn't engaged you cannot pull the trigger but once it is at this point you can and henry's triggers every one i've owned uh, has an excellent trigger and this one is no exception this one breaks right around four and a half pounds and you guys can see it's a very short travel right there it's just nice and crisp um, you can't complain about the triggers on the henry rifles at all like i mentioned earlier the stock is made out of american walnut you guys can see very good checkering here in the grip area to give you a positive control of the rifle uh, when you're firing or when you're just grabbing it out of a saddle or something like that you can pull it out there and the texture will help you grip it positively we also have a sling swivel here on the back and another difference between like the brass uh, Henry 4570 and this one is that this one has a rubber butt pad so I certainly like that it absorbs some of the shock of the 4570 and if you're going to be out shooting a bunch of rounds through it it's going to beat your shoulder up a little bit less it's obviously a little bit more comfortable as well when you put it in your shoulder pocket so stock very nice all the way around you guys can see the full tang here coming off the receiver and even that of course is case color hardened as well the lever action gun is a very simple action, so I think we covered all the details that we really could get into so far in the review. One that we didn't talk about, of course, is going to be price. So the MSRP on these is $995, I believe, and of course, street price, you're going to see them less than that. And a lot of places carry these. I know Cabela's has those. Uh, we'll put a link down below for that, um, but there's many stores out there that carry them, including a lot of local gun stores. They're pretty popular guns for sure. So um, really, what do I think of it overall? Well, well, I had never shot the 4570 like I mentioned before and it's a cartridge that dates back to what I think like 1873 so it's been around a while of course the load's been modernized a little bit but you are putting a lot of energy downrange uh, with that caliber and it's taken every type of big game in North America so it's perfectly fine if you guys want to go out there and hunt deer with it uh, you'll have no issues at all but I mean it's taken down moose grizzly uh, lots of other animals plenty out in Africa as well this thing uh, has power out to 100 50 200 yards um, as much as pretty much any of the calibers out there and to think that it's such an old cartridge um, but still very relevant in today's world is pretty cool so um, plenty accurate like you guys saw there and the weight is nice like we mentioned earlier with that octagonal barrel adding a little bit of weight to it I think it comes in at 8.10 pounds um, so it's not a lightweight rifle at all but you kind of want that with that caliber so all in all I think it's really cool um, I've been a fan of lever guns now for a few years. I think I've had them for three years. Relatively new to me, but they grow on you. Um, anybody who shot them knows that they are just plain fun to shoot. And in a big caliber like 4570, it becomes a little bit more fun, at least for me anyway. I'm sure some folks out there would be a little bit intimidated by it, but for me, it's fun for sure. And uh, for those wondering about the recoil, um, if you've shot a 12 gauge shotgun, you'll have no problem with this. It may actually be a little bit lighter. I guess that's going to vary on the load, both of the shotgun round and the 4570, but it's comparable. And with the pad and everything like that on the stock, it's not bad at all. I wouldn't give it to like a new shooter, but for an experienced shooter, it's not bad at all. If you guys have any questions about the rifle or anything like that, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always, but thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing and we'll see you in the next video. First shots right here. Never fired a 4570 before. Let's see how the shoulder likes it. Or doesn't. Me? Troll the trolls? Never.